Many of you have questions about how the saltwater intrusion will affect your day to day routine. We've been listening to you and working to get you answers. Kelly Cummings breaks down what you need to know. What can I do to reduce or eliminate salt from drinking water? The Louisiana Department of Health says it can't be boiled or filtered out using conventional filtration or other common store bought water filters, such as Brita filters. Once your water system is affected, it's recommended to use bottled water or some other fresh water source. What are the risks of consuming salt water? The health department says salt water can make drinking water unsafe, especially for people with kidney disease or high blood pressure, people on a low sodium diet, dialysis patients, infants and pregnant women. The health effects of drinking salt water have been found to be associated with cardiovascular diseases, diarrhea and abdominal pain. Should I be conserving water? The New Orleans Sewage and Water Board says conservation practices are always a good idea and will become more important if and when saltwater intrusion becomes a factor. But for now, customers who would like to store extra drinking water in the event it's needed in the future can fill reusable containers with tap water now. Does salt corrode plumbing? According to the health department, over time, high levels of salt water can cause damage to plumbing, appliances, cooling systems that use water, and water heaters. LDH recommends checking with your manufacturer, vendor, or service provider for more information on specific equipment. Last but not least, can my pet drink salt water? The answer is no. The health department recommends providing bottled water or some other freshwater source for pets. What steps should I take to protect my infant or young children? The Louisiana Department of Health recommends using bottled spring or purified water to prepare formula if breastfeeding is not an option. When will things begin to improve? Our team of certified meteorologists at WWL-TV say that rain is needed farther north in areas such as the Ohio River Valley. Once it rains there, the water could take anywhere between a couple of weeks to a couple of months to reach us here. Forecasts don't show any improvements between now and the end of the year. Should I be hoarding bottled water? No, the governor has urged people not to do this and here's why. This is not a national emergency. It's specific to our area. Water deliveries will be restocked as usual, so there's no need to panic buy. Plus, keep in mind, some folks need distilled water for ventilator machines and other equipment. What alternatives are there for bottled water? The New Orleans Sewage and Water Board says folks can fill reusable containers with tap water now to have on hand. The CDC recommends that the container has a top that can be closed tightly, is made of unbreakable material, and has a narrow neck or opening so water can be poured out. Is it safe to water plants? According to the Audubon Nature Institute, it depends on how much salt is in the water. More than 70 milligrams per liter could become toxic to plants if they are watered frequently. The bigger threat is salt building up in your soil. That's why horticulturists recommend investing any water on trees and shrubs. They say your grass will recover quicker than more mature plants. How does this impact fishing on the Mississippi River? The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries says anglers may notice spotted sea trout and redfish in parts of the river that they usually do not. As salinity increases, bass and other species will move to upper parts of the river in marsh to seek out lower salinity until river levels return. What should you do if you have fish in aquariums that require regular water changes? Wildlife and Fisheries says if your fish is not tolerant of any salinity, buy gallons of unpurified spring water to use for water changes. It does not have chlorine or salt. Here's an interesting one. Will marine animals swim inland because of increased salinity? The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries says it's not unusual to have sharks in the Mississippi River any given year regardless of salinity, but some animals to be mindful of that could occur in the river because of elevated salinities are jellyfish and stingrays. Let's talk about appliances. We spoke to local appliance expert Broussard Appliance. They said when saltwater intrusion happened previously, there were no major issues to appliances. So how will this impact appliances? Broussard Appliance says the main appliance you need to be concerned about is your refrigerator. You'll want to stop using your fridge's ice maker and stop using the water in the door. 
other independent ice machines shouldn't be used until the water is safe to drink. Is it safe to do laundry? Broussard Appliance said it's okay to use your washing machine. They said there's nothing more corrosive than bleach, and we already use that in our machines. He emphasized this will not be water straight out of the Gulf. This is river water with high levels of salinity. Is it safe to run my dishwasher? Broussard Appliance said you can continue to use your dishwasher. There should be no problems with using water with high salinity. In fact, some dishwashers have a salt water feature. Is it safe to wash my car? According to car insurance companies and dealerships, salt is known to cause corrosion and rust on your vehicle. While this water will be normal river water with higher levels of salinity, it's best to play it safe by not using it on your vehicle. Will the potential government shutdown impact the response to the saltwater wedge? The Army Corps of Engineers says it will have no impact. Is it safe to bathe? According to the New Orleans Health Department, yes, it will be safe to bathe or shower in. However, you may want to consult your health care provider for specific precautions for vulnerable populations. We have all of these questions and more posted online at WWLTV.com. Main safe to drink. We have an issue uh, with with the water supply. We will let the public know well in advance. We're tracking uh, the wedge as it moves up river uh, it, daily. We're getting those numbers in, and there's no circumstance under which we're going to turn off water supply. We're going to provide pressure regardless of what the chloride concentration is coming in. Um, so. I just hope that folks understand that and, and will take that to heart that the, the water is and will remain safe to drink until there, there may be an issue, at which point we would advise the public well in advance. Um, well, as at far this as point, we're still, we're, we're still weeks away from, from having to, to worry about uh, any of this, correct? That's correct. End of October uh, is the timeline we've been given from the Army Corps for our Carrollton intakes, and then uh, the 22nd on or about for our Algiers intakes is what the Army Corps is telling us could happen. And that's all dependent on rain. Uh, if we get rain up in the Ohio River Valley, that can change the dynamics, but that's the date range for now. What about uh, the, this uh, barge plan? I think the Corps has a plan to, to uh, um, eventually get up to 36 million gallons of water uh, a day that would help dilute some of the water uh, in the downriver treatment plants. Um, are, is the Sewage and Water Board preparing the, the reservoir barge and other equipment that would be necessary to receive water from the core? Yes, we have a consultant engineer helping us right now working on that very setup for our Algiers plant. I believe that's a viable option for us. That's the best option we've got at the moment. We do have some backup considerations but we are working on that reservoir barge and transfer setup right now. And the core uh, tells us that they will have the capacity to be able to barge that water over for Algiers. What about the Carrollton water plant? That might be a little bit more difficult just simply because of the size of and scope of, of that, that the treatment facility. Yeah, the Carrollton water plant is more of a challenge because that, that plant treats between 130 and 150 million gallons of water a day. So we do have some options there that we're exploring, um, but barging is one that would just be a little too technically difficult and there just isn't enough barging capacity for Carrollton, but we do have a couple options that we're looking at there too. Can, can you talk a, a little bit about that, knowing that these are still initial plans that are being in the works and how, how will you be able to um, dilute the water, uh, the salinity in the water uh, f on such a big scale? Yeah, um, we don't have specifics at this point, but on a big picture, uh, we're looking at some potential pumping and piping options, but those are, are big picture, big dollar requests uh, that we're gonna need a lot of federal assistance on, uh, but we don't have specifics on that just yet. Um, so that, that um, would leave, I guess, a lot of people feeling a little uncomfortable um, knowing that, that it is not, there is no easy fix there um, you can't bring in a reverse osmosis filter and, and have that uh, take care of 146 um, 
million gallons a day facility. Um, is it, is it, is it, am I uh, oversimplifying it there or making it worse? No, I, I don't think that's an oversimplification, but the good news is we've got a number of regional partners. We are in communications uh, daily, had a briefing with the Army Corps and GOSEP today, uh, and we are hopeful that we will find a solution that will allow not just Orleans Parish, but Jefferson, and then by extension, we're working with St. Bernard. So I am confident that we have viable options on the table right now uh, that we're going to work to provide that dilution factor so that we can continue to provide potable water. So the, the, the focus would be trying to get water from upriver where the uh, water has not uh, inundated, been inundated with salt water, and then maybe pushing it down from you know, St. Charles, St. John, St. James, uh, those river parishes up above us. Yeah, that is that is the primary focus. It's just a matter of specifics on that. Yeah. Um, and uh, what what is your timetable for getting everything together? Uh, we're going to need a decision from the federal government here probably by the end of the week in order to be able to do something, uh, something meaningful. But I am assured that we will we will have some decisions here uh, shortly. What would it take to do that? What type of infrastructure would you have to install on the fly to, to make that happen? Uh, it would require a, a lot of capacity in terms of pumps and piping. Uh, and as I mentioned, we've, we have been in conversations with folks about how to make that happen. And we believe that it is a possible option. And uh, is, is going into some of the canals an option as well? Uh, we've talked about that. Uh, the canals aren't aren't set up to transport that level of water, and then the pumps are all meant to pump in the other direction. So, and furthermore, we wouldn't really want to take up our stormwater conveyance capacity in the event that we did have a heavy local rain. And and uh, just just again, the the, the uh, reverse osmosis is is probably not not the the best fit, at least for for Carrollton, correct? Yeah, we've had discussions about reverse osmosis uh, with a number of different groups and, and simply the, the level of water production that we would need uh, makes that an option that's not, it's not on the top of our list right now. It would be very difficult to achieve. And are you in the process of, 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 of getting the water intake uh, pipes up higher in, in, the, in the river? So we took a look at that. We've gone out and surveyed uh, those intakes, especially uh, on the Carrollton plant side. And those are already within the top five to 10 feet of the water column. So the good news is we are only pulling off of the very top strata of the, of the river. So that's already been accomplished by the initial design. And that would make it uh, with knowing that the salt water hugs the bottom and it's heavier than, than water, that would, um, maybe give you a little more cushion when it comes to the salinity? Yes, that's correct. We'll be pulling off. We are pulling off the freshest part of the river. Uh, anything else you want to pass along to, to your customers? Yeah, absolutely. Be calm, be collected. Uh, we are working on options to be sure that we can dilute our water. We're going to continue to provide water service uh, and don't don't panic. Don't worry. Uh, if you do, if you do feel like you need to to save some water, our water is currently safe to drink. So if you want to use a reusable uh, container, that's absolutely an option. No need to go buy pallets and cases of water. And uh, we are we're looking forward to and hoping and praying for rain in Ohio. And uh, one question that we had this morning in our editorial meeting: Well, at some point you. Um, ask uh, your, your residents to, to conserve, in, in other words, to, to stop and, and put a pause on, on watering the lawns and stuff like that so you can conserve the amount of, of, of drinking water that, that you can. Is, 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 that, is that in the works? Yeah, Paul, that's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, if, if we do get uh, saltwater intrusion that reaches this level, uh, that would be the time to look at conservation. As it currently sits, we've got plenty of fresh water moving past and into our intake. So con conservation right now isn't necessary, um, though water conservation is always a good idea. But at that point, if we did get to a place where we needed to dilute at our intakes, uh, we would absolutely be hoping and asking our, uh, our rate payers to be able to, to conserve so that every gallon that we conserve is a gallon that we don't have to dilute.